what? I didn't have time to put on my hat and it starts recording? That's unacceptable. <laughs> All right, guys. I have uh, Jordan on today and it's been a while. We needed to catch up. It's what, at least three months, right? We haven't, uh, we, we didn't talk. I think the, the PMs, uh, yeah, they were grinding sideways. I can't remember exactly where, where they were, but I've been following your tweets, Jordan, and your uh, and your articles. By David, by David Hunter jokes. Uh, David Hunter, well, I love those. <laughs> he's blocked me. I realize why he's blocked me. <laughs> and I think he's he he follows, if you like a tweet of somebody who disses him, like I used, there was these guys, these parody guys a little while back, uh, you know, the David Hunter with the mustache. With the, and I just found that funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm a like human. a whole group of them. Yeah. I found that funny. I liked one of those things. It made me yeah. laugh. It's like no disrespect to anybody. If somebody did that about me, bad charts. I don't know. I I could try to giggle. I mean, it's if, if yeah. I mean, if 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 someone like I was talking to somebody about this, like just don't be nasty. If someone's really nasty about it, they deserve to get blocked. But if someone's making a funny joke, like you got to give them some credit for being original. <laughs> and I th and so yeah, I think it. I he blocked me because. Because I didn't, I never really had interactions with him, so he must have blocked me because he saw me like something that he didn't like. And if you have time to do that, I, I don't even have time to do that. Like I can't believe somebody has time. Like if somebody blocks me, okay, you block me. Like I'm moving on. I have charts to do. <laughs> I don't have time to micromanage Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, I just yeah to actually to to bring it back to the markets. It's actually kind of a sentiment indicator for me because I'm, I can look at the engagement that those jokes about David Hunter and some of them are getting 50, 60,000 views, which is not that, you know, not that much because there's plenty of other people who have huge accounts. But if I post something about gold, at least, you know, probably up until a couple of weeks ago, I mean, the engagement, I don't know, 10,000, 5,000, 3,000 views, not that many. And then you post this joke about, this infamous guy on Twitter and it's like 50,000 views, 60,000, 45,000. So it's like a sentiment indicator for me. Like these jokes about this guy with a huge account are getting like five and 10 X the engagement of important analysis on precious metal. So that's just a little bit on sentiment anecdotal, but it's a sentiment indicator. Yeah. It's crazy. Up until two weeks ago, my account, I was doing the practically the same charts because I do big picture charts nothing i was scrambling to get 100 likes on any of my charts it's like and now it's bam uh, every people are waking up they're they're flocking back i don't know we're hitting the algorithms and now the 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 same type of charts the with the same targets the same breakout lines like practically the same everything two three four more times engagement so yeah it's 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 definitely there's a there's something that flip but how do you how do you know cuz you know in a bull market sentiment could get stretched what's your takeaway when are you going to say okay this 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 is uh, getting insane like the sentiment well it, it, it's really difficult um to say because in a in a like present or short-term context the difficulty is you know gold is getting ready obviously it didn't do it today on the day we're speaking but it's getting ready to make that significant move higher and when you're looking at major breakouts in gold, um, it, you go back to, I think, 2003, 2005, 2007, uh, 2009, 2019, the sentiment actually can get, I mean, you're, you're looking at sentiment indicators and the COT, the net spec position is usually fairly high when gold breaks out. So you know, for a market to break out and make a huge move higher, that is always going to be accompanied by sentiment that looks really bullish and concerning. Uh, but it, it's, it's really not. That's just, that's just how the market works and what history tells us. You, you, a market that's going to make a huge multi-decade breakout, it will be accompanied by a big increase in sentiment. So, um, you know, so maybe the market needing to pull back today or for a couple of weeks or whatever, that doesn't really concern me. If you look at, um, you know, the things I really like to look at, I, I think I tweeted something in the last couple of days. It was a great chart on Twitter where it, it just showed the assets in, I think, gold ETFs or GLD versus the total assets. And you can see that chart and it's way below where it was in 2011. 
it's not even, I mean, it's like 1% or one and a half percent versus nine or 10% at the peak. So, uh, you know, indicators like that. And also if you look at assets that are in gold ETFs, they have not really budged that much in, you know, the last three, four, five months. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting because you, you want those indicators to be, you don't want them to be stretched, but at the same time, you kind of need, when you're making that huge breakout, you kind of need them to get stretched. So I feel like in the last couple of weeks, we're kind of, you know, we're getting more stretched in terms of sentiment, which in the, it's kind of negative because that can tell you we're really extended, but at the same time in the bigger picture, you really need more people coming into the market. You need more bullishness for there to be a real bull market. Uh, yeah, I agree. It, it's because, yeah, because what's really our sample rate of sentiment, if I just look on Twitter, but you're right, look at these crypto guys. Sentiment was through the roof when it was at, let's say when it was breaking out in 2020, at 10,000, at 20,000, at 30,000, sentiment was through the roof. If somebody would have just looked at Michael Saylor's laser eyes and sold everything at 30,000, the that thing, you know, it really, really got extended. Like I like looking at the distance from moving average, just on a chart, how far am I from the moving average? And right now, gold's coiled above its one in three a year. Like all, all these charts, some of them are even below the one year moving average. So blow off tops is when you're hundred percent above the three year moving average, like some, whatever, like, and we're not, there's, that's why I'm not worried. We hadn't really taken off yet to start thinking that this is the end. I don't even think we're we're barely like you said that we're barely taking off, right? Like, did you chart the gold versus SPX? You, I think you you're covering that one also, right? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the zero point seven or zero point six eight. I think that I mean, once we move above that, I think that's like the one hundred percent confirmation we're in a new real bull market. Because at the last conference I went to, I said, well, gold's going to break out before that ratio will break out above zero point seven. So gold can break out and go to 23 or 2400 but that ratio really needs to break out to confirm that you're in a real bull market i mean and that's you know on a secular basis that's the big difference from now versus 2016 or 2018 yes. is i mean it it may not happen yet but we're we're going into a period where you're you're having bonds. I mean, you, you could say bonds are already in a new secular bear, even though they're you know they could make a huge counter trend rally, you know, while we go into recession. Uh, but we're getting into a bigger period where you're going to have stocks and bonds are both in a secular bear, or at least you can say they're no longer in a secular bull. That's happening as gold is breaking out. So those are huge. Those are huge drivers for gold and precious metals. And I I think you know, and, and one thing about gold in the S and P is. I mean, it's a great leading indicator, but also in the short term, I mean, a lot of people have, they have this worry that we're going to see the market roll over. You have another bear market leg down and that's going to take precious metals down. And I mean, it, it might a little bit, I think this is going to be more like 2001, 2002, but what's interesting is I think when that scenario comes, you'll see gold, you'll see the gold to S and P ratio actually hold up and maybe even right. break out at that point. Like it'll, it, it'll break out the next time the market comes under pressure. And then a little bit after that, you, you know, the, the rest of the sector will, you know, the correction in the rest of the sector will end and then they'll start moving higher. So um, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's a great leading indicator because on a, on a short-term basis, it will move before, the, you know, the most of the sector does. Uh, but then when the most of the sector is moving, sometimes a ratio can cool off a little bit like we've seen in the last, you know, couple of weeks or month or so. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. That's why I was when I was putting some of these gold to SPX chart, and the first people, well, the ratio could go up and the gold could be tanking just less than SPX, and they're right. But I still see that as step one. So if relatively versus the SPX, even if they're both going down, but gold's able to gain ground, that is super positive. That is, that is super super positive stuff. Because the next step, you're just one more step away from gold actually breaking out on its own chart, right? So that's win-win. And this, I got to give you credit because I remember a whole a way back, I think you did one of your post articles and me, I was just looking at charts. I, I had overlaid the gold to SPX and I just by haphazardly, I said, I put, I overlaid the silver chart 
And I think you saw one of my tweets, I mean, maybe two, three years ago, and you put in one of your articles and you said, oh, Patrick Karim, and you'd coined the word capital flows because you said the gold to SPX, as gold is able to steal capital flows from SPX, you see silver tracks that, right? Silver does not track gold because silver is not back at all time highs, but it really tracks. And I've been, I've, I, I took that word capital flows and I just ran with it. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's because of you that, ingrained in my head. And I said, that resonated. It made so much sense. That's what we're dealing with. And then you, yeah, you put the miners, did you ever put the as a chart? You put miners on top of the gold to SPX chart. Jesus, they're, it's the same chart. Wow, it's yeah. like, yeah. I don't and think- credit to you because you noticed that you noticed, I mean, I've called the gold to SPX. I mean, that's like the only, I said, that's the number one indicator for gold or the only, ind I've written all these articles over the years and like changed the title. It's basically the same article, but uh, I, I credit you because you, you've seen how that there's so many other charts that will basically track ah. gold to XPX. So when gold to XPX breaks out, the floodgates will really open for the rest of the sector. And then, you know, depending on the timing, also commodities. So, yes. but, but that's because gold, you know, other people say gold is the granddaddy or the godfather of commodities and hard assets. I mean, it's, it's the most important one and it leads the commodity sector. So, um, you know, and, and then obviously looking at it, it's so important versus the stock market because historically what, you know, they can't be in a secular bull at the same time. I mean, maybe if you're using gold stocks, like the late, mid to late sixties, you can kind of make some argument there, but for the most part, they can't be, you know, one is in a secular bull, one is in a secular bear. So the fact that we know gold is really close to breaking out, that means it's over for the S and P and, you know, maybe the S and P can rally a little bit more. And, you know, the S and P after this next bear market, or after the current bear market in the S and P, the S and P can rally and have a cyclical bull for a few years like it did in, you know, the early seventies, I think in 74, it made a higher high, but, you know, once gold makes that major breakout, that's, you know, almost full confirmation that the XPX is now in a secular bear. And, uh, you know, that, that just tells us that the next decade is going to be outstanding for gold, silver, precious metals, and also the other commodities. Don't, don't you have shivers when you hear yourself say that for me, it's like, it's like not too good to be true because I always want to challenge that viewpoint, but you're right. That gold SPX, a hundred year chart, every single time SPX has broken down versus gold, uh, gold, silver, even oil, uranium in the beginning innings, they just, everything flies, man. It's like, the, so even if people say a racial chart, uh, even if the racial chart goes down, both instruments could be going down just one less fast than the other. If I over because I when I overlay the silver chart on top of the gold to SPX chart, if I don't care. It's what it's telling me is if that rate, if gold is I'll be able to outperform SPX with, for whatever reason, silver will track that, and that's what we're gonna play, right? We're gonna and the miners. It's like, sorry, that it's like my I don't know if it's sometimes because I'm French. I look for words in my brain. They're like fighting. Okay, I know. I <laughs> I, I, I'm working on, yeah, I'm working on my book and I'm putting up the videos on YouTube. It's like this secular bull, secular bear. I'm like reading and trying to edit what I'm writing. I'm like, people are going to get confused when they listen to me saying this or reading it because there's cyclical over, you know, secular bull. Well, yes. this was in a secular bull and this is a secular bear. Yeah, it's, but to go, to go back to what you were saying, yes, it's like difficult to talk to the lay person you could say because well, I mean, what can you say? This is the most bullish setup precious metals have ever had, like at least in the last 50 years. So it's hard to, it's hard to like properly explain the significance of where we are, like at this moment in this present time for gold and precious metals as a whole. I mean, they're, we're going to look back in 10 or 15 years yeah. and the gold breakout silver breaking above 50. These will be in technical analysis textbooks in you know future generations like they will be studying and learning about you know what in 20 30 years when they're talking about cup and handle patterns they'll talk about gold in this breakout like that's going to be the holy grail of technical patterns and they'll be looking at silver as you know because i've said it's not quite i mean it, it looks like a cup and handle but it's not it really isn't because it's the, the handle is like corrected way too much so it's it's not a cup and handle nevertheless whenever it still breaks 50 it's going to be super bullish but people will 
future generations, they'll look back at this silver chart and they'll say, holy shit, like this thing had a, you know, 45 year base or whatever. And it, you know, broke out from 50 and look, it went to, you know, 100, like within a year or something like that. So it's, yeah, I mean, people don't, it's hard to, it's hard to like talk about it or properly explain it when you're in it, you're at that moment, but like, that's where we are. I mean, we are, this is a seat, dramatic sea change that's about to take place in precious metals. And it's same thing for the gold stocks. I was telling somebody like a funny article or video title would be gold stocks suck and everybody knows it. Now it's time for the secular bull, <laughs> but it's, it's also it, the same thing is going to be true for gold stocks. Like they're going to, you know, if you look at the Barron's gold mining index and you can, you know, buy this data for 20 bucks, uh, which Nick Laird from sharelinks.com or goldchartsrs.com. He, he tracks that you can buy it from him and he gave me some data. So I have this, he, he gave me some data to attach to the Barron's gold mining index before 1938. And this index will, um, it's going to, not only is it going to make a new all time high, it's going to go way, it's going to go way higher. Like it's, it, it's going to do what, you know, gold and silver will do. So that, I mean, that's another, that's another call that I will go, that I will make soon that, we're going to see a Super Bowl market in gold stocks that that no one can imagine, uh, and that we really haven't seen because it, it, Barron's Gold Mining Index will break out. I mean, it made a new high in I don't know 2008 or 2010 or 11, but it wasn't that far above the um, 1980 peak. So um, it's you know I don't want to say we're breaking out from like a 45 or 43 year base in the gold stock indexes, but you know, we're get, I think we're getting ready to do that. And, and thinking about all these things, that's why gold stocks are going to see a super bull market in a secular bull. Uh, because the, the sentiment, the sentiment, like I said, everybody knows they suck. It's a horrible business, but look, there's a reason why they haven't done well in the last 10, 12 years. And that's because the gold price hasn't done anything and costs have gone up. Well, what happens when you see gold doubling in the next two or three years? And then it's you know, three years, it's at 5,000. Yeah, costs are going to be way up, but these moves in gold are going to way outpace the costs. And we haven't seen that since the early and mid 2000s. So, I mean, that's that's part of the sea change I'm talking about. I have, yes, double, yeah. I have a, uh, I did some uh, distance, a few techniques there to get some targets. I think the next leg up brings us in between, yeah, let's say I'll be conservative 26 to 2800, but I I, I think even 3100 in 2024 is possible for gold, like FOMO type stretch from the moving average. That's pretty much what I'm targeting there for the, yeah, in 2024, that's like crazy stuff, man. Imagine we see that in 2024, $3,000 gold. It's uh it's like we've been so subdued, so hit. It's like it's not even that big a move when you think about it. It's what fifty percent above from where it is here. It's like, and but we always feel guilty. It's like people can never imagine gold going up. But I did a chart, and I think in the seventies, in two years, it did two or three hundred percent twice, and then it did it. And I think I forget yeah. the first tranche, and then after that, from the uh, seventy-eight to two to to eighty, it did another three hundred percent. In the 2000s, uh, in six years, from 2005 to 2011, it did three, 300%, 360%. Yeah. It's like. I, well, yeah, I did that in one of my, um, one of my, in a, in a recent article that in my gold to 4,000. And if you, yeah, focus on, you even putting the 70s aside, focus on the 2000s. And have, have you ever run like a two year or three year rate of change indicator on your two, charts? Like, do not that do, short. They do that for gold and silver yeah. and you can see, you know, how, um, you know, just pick three years or two years. And like, if you pick, I don't know, or even two and a half years for gold, I think I did. I can't remember, but like, for example, the 2018, the August 18 to August 20 move in gold. I mean, that was almost 80%. That was two years. And, and like you were saying, if you look at the mid two thousands and you look at gold's performance over, you know, two years or three years, it's really not a huge stretch yeah. to think it's going to double or go up 150% in two or three years. Now I'm, I'm measuring from that bottom, the, um, the last year, the bottom at 1625 or 1640 on the weekly, whatever it is. So it's, it's my 4,000 target. It's going to be more than a doubling, 
But when you're looking at these things and you say, wow, that are, that already happened. So to, to like make these predictions, it's really, they're really not that crazy. And we're coming out of a super bullish. I mean, the cup and handle patterns are super, super bullish. This is a big one. It's textbook bullish. I mean, the right side of the cup is higher, which indicates like this is a strong pattern. The handle only corrected, you know, went below 38% retracement for one week. It's been above it the rest of the time. So you have all these factors. And I looked at like, it's really hard to find historical cup and handles, but you had one in the S and P from 37 to 50 and the S and P 49 to 57 was the best eight year period for the S and P. Like the market only had like one 20 or 25% correction over an eight year period. Like wow. that was it. It was an incredible incredible move and that way it was breaking out of a cup and handle pattern the same thing also happened in the hong kong market if you look at the hang Seng in the 70s and 80s i mean it wasn't a perfect cup and handle but you can see what happened when it broke out and it, it made this huge move and then you had the 87 crash but even after that it kept moving over you know over the next five seven ten years after that so these pat i mean th this is such a significant setup in gold that it's, I mean, the, the, I mean, what you're saying, it's like, it's when it breaks out, that's going to be a done deal. Like it's, it's going to be really easy for gold to hit 3000 in, oh, yeah. uh, for that. Yeah. For next year. And so based on all these things, it, the other, and the last point is you have the, you know, the measured upside target of the cup and handle, but also the log target, which is the percent target. So, I mean, rough math, you know, gold, it's like 2000 to 1000 or whatever you double it. It's close to 4,000, but uh, the S and P in Hong Kong, they went from the first target to the log target in only six to 12 months. So when gold really gets going, it makes this breakout. It's going to have huge momentum. It'll get to 3000. It's not like it's going to take five or three years to get to 4,000. Like that'll happen. That'll happen pretty quickly. Yeah, um, that's so it's, it's, yeah, it's just an incredible, incredible time, incredible bullish setup. And people are going to be surprised in the next two or three years, like where these prices are going. Yeah, I agree. I, I checked also, like, the, um, I did the four year rate of change on the US purchasing power, and it's breaking down from a 40 year up. So, 1980 rate of change for purchasing power hit rock bottom as gold was topping in silver. And since those lows, it rate of change reflated, reflated. And now there's like a, yeah, a 30 or 20 year, all these massive, that's okay. This is a takeaway. All these massive yeah. trend lines from the 80s or, we have 20 and 40 year trend lines breaking or that get could get challenged to, to be broken out of. And you're right. That's paradigm shift type of stuff, right? It's not, a, yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest, the bigger move for gold will be after the first leg is up to 3,100, 4,000 consolidation for how much time, whatever it needs. But the real crazy move is, is probably going to be after that for, yeah, Jesus, man. It's like, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but we're there now. It's crazy. We're, we're there. We're in, at, yeah. To, yeah, at, to use a base. Yes. I was talking to someone. I said, we're in the first inning of this you know, new bull market in gold. And he said, we're in the top of the first inning. Like we're not, so we're not in the bottom of the first, we're, we're just in the top of the first inning. Like we, we've barely even started. I, I, I used to think that we were, I thought everything was starting back in June of 2019, but in hindsight, that was nothing. That was just waking up from the bear because it was a bear market rally versus SPX. It was the first time it actually broke the downtrend from SPX and everybody got super happy. You remember how crazy it was back in uh, 2020 in August. It's like, but that was nothing. That was a bear market rally for gold versus the SPX. And it managed to go from 1200 to 2000 in that bear. Imagine when it has the capital flows, like yeah. when it goes above the two thirds, like you said, dot six, six there, it's going to be bonkers. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and you, and, and you understand, and I, you know, I don't need to ask you cause I know you agree with me. It's like, people are saying, Oh, well the secular bull on gold started in 2016. It's like, no, you can't have a secular bull oh. when it's not even, it's not even making or sustaining a higher high. And also if you think it's a secular, bull, I mean, look at gold stocks and silver, they really haven't done anything. So it, and, and look at, you know, looking at gold stocks in the history and looking at all these historical trends. And, and I love that you do that because I didn't do this stuff like 20, uh, you know, 2013, 2014, even 2016. You know, I wrote my first book in 2015 about how gold was going to go up. And, 
you know, I wrote another one in 2019, but it was it wasn't until the 2019, you know, that period I finally understood like, okay, here's where we are. We're kind of in like a late sixties trajectory because you're looking at, you know, gold stocks have been going up. They haven't really been in a bull market. You know, the S and P is still, it's slowing down, but it's going up. So, you know, th this is like the mid to late sixties. Um, but you, I mean, to kind of come up with this analysis and understand these things, you know, you have to look at these historical 100 year, 40 and 50 year charts. And I love that you do that. And I, I know that you can tell me, you know, from looking at 60, 80, 100 year charts that you can really understand, you know, how markets move, the importance of intermarket analysis. Like nobody, I think it was John Murphy who came up with intermarket analysis. He like coined the term the school of technical analysis. I mean, this is so important because you can understand in the big picture how markets move. And so you and I, and probably a few other people, like we can, because we're looking at these 100 year charts, like, we, and you know, you're telling me, you know, 40, 60 year trend lines are breaking. You understand the significance of that and what's happening. And, you know, yes, it may, it's not, maybe it's not going to predict the next three months or even one year, but the, these, you know, these massive changes tell you what's going to happen over the next 10 years. And I mean, that is so significant and it's so powerful to be able to understand that. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100% agreed. People go on Yahoo Finance, they have uh, six months of data, daily charts. That's useless for me. I I want to, to, yeah, to spot the, those capital shift and then I'm good to go for what you're telling me that I have a higher probability of making profits year over year for the next seven years. That's where I want to be. It's like gold on the yearly chart, gold from 2001 to, to 2011 for 11 straight years, green candle after green candle. That's what a secular bull market does for, for your portfolio. You sleep you sleep nice at night, you gotta, year after year of greens. Like who doesn't want that? I don't want something that goes down 70%. I'm not going to name anything, but you know, I don't want yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, I, I will, I will say, you know, the gold stocks has this incredible uh, run from like 57 to 80. And they did have, I think three times they had a 60% leg down. Yeah. So, it, and that's what, you know, the analysis that you do, um, you know, percentage above moving averages is really great. I don't know if there's another thing you can do on trading view, but uh, Frank Barbera, who I think is like the real godfather gold stock technician, he's not, a, he's not a, that old of a guy, but he just, he, he's, he's an incredible technical analyst. He also does what's called time span analysis where he's looking at, you know, how it's been X number of days, you know, since gold touched the 200 day or something like that. Mm -hmm. You you could, if you could build that into your work, like that would also be fantastic. I mean, having, yeah, percentage above moving averages. Yeah, that's really great. In addition to that, like, cause yeah, when, when the market gets really bullish and it's been above the moving averages for so long, like you can look at time span analysis and say, okay, well, gold hasn't tested its 200 day in, you know, two years or whatever. And this is the longest time in history. So gold is this stretched above the 200 day and it hasn't tested the 200 day for record amount of time. You look at a few other things, then, you know, okay, like we're getting, you know, we're getting close to where we could have a pullback or a cyclical bear because there will be sharp yes. corrections like gold going to four or 5,000. I mean, your gold could go to 4,000 and then it comes back and corrects, you know, 20% at that point or 25%. Wow. Like yeah. that's the easy, that's the, yeah. those are the kind of corrections that we'll see like in this new secular bull market. Cause you're not going to just steadily stair step to five, six, 7,000. Like there will be volatility. And that's why you have to know how you can manage it along the way. And so, yeah, like lo looking at uh percentage of the moving average, like that's great. Like that's a great tool. Yes, it, it, you could almost guess. Let's say you get stretched historically to previous level distance. Then after that, like the 200-day moving average. So the correction, you know, like it's either time and or price. So you can almost guess. So you can do a pull flag in a great continuation pattern in a bull trend. And as the 200-day moving average starts getting closer, say, so okay, let's keep an eye on this. And as soon as you have a bullish pattern breakout and you're close, you're, you've reset your distance from the moving average, bam. You get another opportunity to uh, to add on or like do whatever you want, you know. So people could step aside once you're stretched. You wait, you wait, and once you get a a, a pull flag, you you jump back on board. It's beautiful. People don't do TA. 
I, it's, it's kind of sad because they, when we go to, th to over $3,000 gold, everybody's going to start piling on, but we're probably going to be stretched from the moving averages. And then they're going to have to hold for what, a, when you're correction, six months correction. And it, it's, yeah. it's unfortunate, but that's, that's the nature of the beast in the, of headline news, right? They're, it's like, you remember silver screens was the exact top, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are you going to, how else are you going to want it? <laughs> oh man, yeah. Jordan. I can't yeah, wait for this I, to unfold. It's going to be, uh, yeah. I, I got to ask you, how do you have any criteria where your thesis goes down the drain? Because I've seen these $1,400 targets, whatever. Let's say, well, at what point do you say, okay, maybe my timing's off. Like, what are your lines in the sand? You're looking for the downside there to, to say, okay, this, I'm not. The, the one thing about lines in the sand for gold, it's really difficult because gold will, if, if you look historically, gold makes so many false moves. It, it makes it, there's a lot of false moves and so we have to be careful of that but i i'm just the one thing is you have all these guys who are like predicting well not all these guys but some you know the deflationary like yeah. there's going to be this deflationary crash and like gold's going to crash gold gold that's actually good for gold if that happens because number one gold's not going to go to 1400 it would probably it would probably even it would probably bottom at 1650 or, or whatever. I mean, that that's not going to happen. There's there's no chance of that happening right now. Uh, but even in that scenario, gold, like it's a marketing thing that people use because in that scenario, gold outperforms things on the way down. Like people are saying, okay, there's going to be a deflationary crash and gold's going to go down 30 or 40%. Well, you should be shorting the other commodities then. You should be shorting the stock market because in that scenario, gold outperforms everything else. It's like you were talking about with the ratios where they're both going down nominally, but gold is going up. So uh, that's not the that's not the real bearish outcome for gold. The bearish outcome for gold is when the economy's it, it's it's gaining strength, it's improving, it's growing, the the Fed can hike interest rates, real interest rates are rising. Like that's when you have the worst, uh the worst periods for gold. So um yeah, I mean, I know it It kind of sounds ridiculous to not have a, you know, a clear, well, other scenario. But for me, I just don't, I don't really see that right now. I mean, I, I you know, sometimes it's hard to like predict the moment things are going to happen. But I, I just see too many things that are happening in gold's favor right now that it's, it's you know, it's, it's going to break out and run for a little while before there's any significant, you know, pullback of a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We're closer now to the breakout than the breakdown, so it makes sense to focus on, you know, let's say the price does go down to sixteen uh, to sixteen fifty or whatever. Okay, then I'll start looking lower. But right now we're hogging the two thousand. We're like, Jesus, and it's about to break out versus uh, SPX like uh, the dot fifty, and then the next target is going to be dot six six. So yeah, you got to stay and you look look at gold and all the other currencies, and they they've always shown the way. So they're not even breaking down the the other gold still beating all the, and gold's about to break out versus the Swiss franc which is a uber uber uh, powerful whenever gold breaks out versus the Swiss franc and the Swiss franc breaks out versus the USD it's been raging raging bull market it's 2005 to 2011 type of scenario it's like and it's right did you look if ever you have a chance to look at that chart there gold express and Swiss franc and gold is right on the cusp of breaking out versus the Swiss franc which is it's never been good times for us dollar when that happened and it's always been great times for gold when that happens crazy stuff man you're right we have to be uber bullish <laughs> yeah th th this yeah this is the time to be super bullish you don't want to be reckless but th this is yeah. you know you don't want to be reckless or be a pig i mean use common sense but this is you know guys like you and me we can tell people that this is you know there is a real real risk that this market is going to really run and get really hot in the next couple of years. You just have to understand that risk and, you know, prepare for it, get ready, you know, use common sense when you're trading and investing, you know, the things moonshot takes them off the table, you know, buy, buy what's cheap, you know, it, it, in the sector before everything takes off. Uh, but you, yeah. Do you don't want to be a pig? Yeah. Cause the pigs, they, they get slaughtered, right? <laughs> they do. Oh, they do. Hey, Jordan, that was really, really fun catching up. We're going to have to do it uh, in a few months again, for sure. You want to tell everybody where they, they could get all, all your stuff, please? 
you can follow me uh, at my website at thedailygold.com. I post videos and articles there. Um, I post a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. You can look up the Daily Gold. You can follow me on Twitter at the Daily Gold. I mean, if you like a few jokes, I include those on my Twitter. Uh, but yeah, I put out a lot of free info. So check that out. All right. All right, guys. Let's uh, thank Jordan again for, for showing up. And uh, yeah, let's uh, catch up uh, in a few months, man. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Jordan. I appreciate your time, man. All right.